So you can set which uh, uh, channel you want to be on, if you want stable, beta, or alpha. And for iOS, you could do the same thing. Great. So now let's go into actually writing some code. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to open up the storyboard. Now we have another module where we go deeper into uh, iOS and how it works. Uh, but I'm just going to add a button. I'm going to do a, um, a message box. And here, right here, what you see is a storyboard designer. So we have a designer that we could use. And this designer actually talks to the Mac build host also. So at first, you know, sometimes it is going to be a little bit slow. Uh, but that's because it's communicating to the Mac machine. So I'm going to drop a button. I'm going to go to the properties. And I'm going to change that to click me. You see it updates. And I'm going to double click. So, so I'm, I'm on my PC. I'm doing the UI design. And I'm, I'm modifying all that, but it's doing all this with in communication with the Mac behind the scenes as well, right? Exactly, exactly. And then one, once I double click, uh, what you get is you get some uh, designer files. Uh, so here's the, the button double click, or it calls it UI button five, touch, touch up inside. So that's the click event in iOS. Uh, so a little bit different. Um, then we go here. Uh, I'm going to new up a new alert view, and I'm going to say hello iOS, hello from studio. I'm going to set our delegate to null right here. And the, the cancel button, I'm just going to say OK, and no other buttons that we want to show. And then I'm going to call show. So now I'm going to debug this. I'm going to click Start. OK, so that's going to compile it. And then it's going to uh, send it across the wire to your iPod? Yep. So right here, if you look in your output, you have something called Mac server log. All right. So you could switch to that. And you see all the communication happening. See, so deploy succeeded. And it's trying to run it. And if I switch over to my actual device, Click me, hello from Visual Studio. And then we go from there. We could also set a breakpoint. You know, so if you're familiar with all, all that good stuff. All right, so you just you just pushed the button on your iPod. Yes. And it broke, it dropped here into Visual Studio on my breakpoint. Yes. So I just pushed it, dropped into the breakpoint. We could go in there, we could see the sender is the button uh, right there, and you know, just hit F5. And All right, great. So we have integrated debugging then with our exactly. with our device. Exactly. So that is it for Hello World on iOS. Now we could quickly go in and we could create a Android application. So with that, I'm just going to right click, I'm going to add a new project, and I'm going to go in and select a blank Android app. And I'm going to call it Hello Droid. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to get rid of the storyboard just so we don't get alerted anymore. And here you can see we have Android is different in the way it lays things out. Uh, but it's the same as the, the way it lays it out in, the, um, in native if you're writing it in Java. So you have layouts. And main.axml is going to be our layout. So I'm going to double click on that. And essentially, this is just some XML to layout. So it looks similar to XAML, uh, but it's not. Uh, but it's just some XML to layout your screen. So here you see you have the default Hello World. I'm going to actually add another button. Just drag it over. I'm going to double click it. But you see here the difference with Android is when you double click, you're actually setting the text. You are not setting the. Um, uh, the event handler, okay, just the way it works uh, with Android is a little bit different, and I'll show you why. So I'm going to name the button uh, somewhere in here, right here. I'm going to give it an ID of BTN click, and then 
I'm going to go into main activity. And then we're going to grab the button. So the way it works in, and in the Android world is you got to set a content view for your main activity. And here we're saying resource.layout.main. We want to grab that resource and set it as our contact view. And then if you want to grab a button, equals, so we find view by ID, button and resource.id.btn click. So I'm going to build this, set this as my startup, and I'm going to build it. And I'm going to change something here. So I'm just going to change the API level down to 17. So that's setting it to a previous version of, of Android? Yep. OK. I'm just going to try to build this again. So now you see here, it's now it's successful. Uh, and the resource IDs go in here. And this is a, a, a generated class uh, by Xamarin. And basically, it goes in into your resources, and it creates any IDs. It creates layouts. So basically, you don't have to remember any of these numbers. OK, so we have the event. And we're going to take the button, and, and we're going to do the same kind of dialog box then that we had with our uh, uh, app, with, Android application uh, or with the iOS, iOS yeah, application? With the iOS, iOS version. Yeah, we're All going right. to do the same thing. We're just going to show a dialog box. And I have a quick code snippet here, because to show a dialog box on Android is a little bit more code. I'd say so. Yeah. <laughs> so you have alert dialog.builder, uh, pass it in this, set your positive button, and we have some console.write lines, set your negative button, set your message, set your title, and then you show. Um, so I'm going to run this. And with Android, uh, it's the same type of thing. So some things to, to get familiar with or that you should be aware of are you have uh, the emulator manager. So you could click on that in your toolbar. And you see right here, I have no emulators available because I didn't install any. The Android emulators that come with the Android SDK are fairly slow. I recommend you look at the, um, the Xamarin Android player. Yes, uh, I've, I've heard that's really fast. It's a, a lot faster, and yeah, it, I just recommend it. Um, you also have the SDK manager. SDK manager is where you want to go in and where you want to download any other um, SDKs. For example, here you see Android 5, API 21, 4.4 uh, is API 20. So all these different API levels that you could download um, if you need to support older versions of Android. All right. And this is part of and the Android SDK. So um, it's not Xamarin specific that's there. It's just the Android SDK. All right. And here we see we could uh, select an actual um, uh, device. So I have a Nexus 4 connected. So I'm going to select that. And I'm going to start. Set my Hello Droid to debug. And here you see it's, it's compiling using the uh, uh, Java SDK. All right, so we're, we're deploying this again to, to a real device that's connected to your machine. Yeah. And uh, we're going to look later on in this uh, series at, at the Xamarin Test Studio, right? Yep. All right, so we can look at deploying actually to a lot of different devices, not just a physical device that we have or, or those emulators. Uh, so we'll look at that later on in, in one of the modules. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I think Xamarin Test Studio has over a thousand, uh, or uh, Test Cloud, uh, over a thousand devices that you could test on, All right. physical devices. So did you get that up and did you get yep. that running? So that's running now. All right. So here you see we have the uh, Hello World, and I actually need to click on a real device, not the screen. So here I'm clicking on my device. That's the original code that comes in. All right. And here's the one that you wrote. The one that we wrote is right here, and here's our thing. And again, you could do uh, debugging. So if you want to set a breakpoint, uh, click, and there's our breakpoint being hit. You could have five it, and then the device will show the result. All right, very neat. So that is uh, our intro into 
iOS and Android development. Okay, so to recap the module, we took a look at what Xamarin was. Uh, we looked at what you would need to uh, get Xamarin up and running on your machine. Uh, we looked at how Xamarin interplays with Visual Studio and it actually sends the code over to the Mac to do the compile. And then uh, had a look at a couple of simple demos. And uh, I think if we take a break now, we can come yeah. back and uh, we'll take a look at um, something more, well, yeah. a little bit more detailed specifically we'll for dive, iOS. We'll yeah, dive deeper into iOS and see exactly how all that works. All right, great. We'll take a break here and go, and we'll see you back in just a minute. All right, welcome back to Module 2. I'm Brian Sherwin, and this is Mark Ortega, and we're talking about cross-development, cross-platform development with Xamarin and Visual Studio. And uh, in this module, we're going to catch up where we left off last time, and we're going to build some iOS applications. Yeah, so uh, in the previous module, we built a quick Hello World type application. In this module, we're going to get a little bit more in-depth on how uh, how Xamarin works, uh, how uh, Xamarin.iOS works, the app lifecycle. Uh, we're going to start building our application and uh, learn how to use uh, UI table views, storyboards, uh, map kit uh, within our application. Because the application we're going to be building is the, um, the Heritage Properties application to show Heritage Properties in a list, to show it in a map view, and to show the details of that Heritage property. So now, first off, how uh, iOS works, uh, Xamarin iOS works. So we have our C-sharp uh, code. We have uh, Xamarin that's in between there. And Xamarin allows us to build for iOS, Android, and we can leverage that same C-sharp code on the Windows, on the Windows platform. So the build and execution model is a, uh, it's different on iOS than on Android and on Windows. So on, on iOS, you have something called ahead of time compiling. So ahead of time compiling basically is there to compile your application down to native code. So the Apple restrictions basically say that you can't have, you have to have uh, binary code on in the app store uh, within your application. And uh, that's essentially what Xamarin does. And that is why you need a Mac, because you need to build the application within uh, a Mac uh, and the Mac build host. All right, so this is a function of Xamarin that we're actually going to compile down to native code rather than that intermediate language that, that .NET is known exactly, for. Exactly, exactly. This, this ahead of time compiling is similar to NGEN or native code generation that you have on, on, that plat on the uh, .NET framework. Um, so it's a, something similar that Xamarin does to compile your IL code down to native code. Uh, now there are some limitations on there and some limitations are um, you can't use reflection.emit. So no, if you want to you know, do some uh, build some IL code on the fly and run it on the device, you won't be able to do that with iOS. And um, no remoting available. And there's, a, if you see on the slide, there's a link at the bottom. Um, those are, it goes straight to the Xamarin page on some of the limitations in my experience, but I haven't seen anything to block me from building an app using Xamarin and iOS. So our latest project was a barbecue that connects over Bluetooth to a iPhone to tell you the, the temperature of your steak. So it, it, no limitations so far that I could see of. All right, great. So the iOS uh, runtime model, so essentially it works like this. So you have iOS, uh, which is the platform. Then you have your app native code, and within there you have your mono runtime and the, the base class libraries from .NET. Um, Xamarin does some really interesting things, some neat things in there where they'll compile your application and they'll remove anything that's not used to keep the, the file size small. Uh, so they'll still compile it down to native code, but remove any unused uh, properties or methods or even from the, their base class libraries, they'll remove it from your application. Uh, but with this, it compiles down to native code and you have direct access into things like MapKit, UI View Controller, HealthKit, Anything that is natively accessible from object Objective-C, you can also access it from uh, Xamarin using c -sharp. And you could also do things called bindings, um, where you could use existing Objective-C libraries within your Xamarin application. Gotcha. So I have the full surface area of iOS available to me through, through Xamarin. Pretty much, yeah. Whatever you can do in Objective-C, you could do with, uh, with Xamarin. Great. So now in every mobile platform, you have application life cycles and structures, and iOS is no different. So you have one in Android, you have one in Windows, and in iOS, 
what you have is you're going to have your application in the foreground, and it's going to be in two states. It's going to be in active or inactive state. You're going to, it could potentially go in the background, and it's going to be a backgrounded state. You're going to be in the not running state, which means obviously it's not running, and suspended state. So when the user comes in, it uses your, uh, it wants to use your app, uh, they'll start it up, you'll be in the active state. You could be in the inactive state, for example, if a phone call comes in, you know, you could be backgrounded, um, or a person checks an email, uh, or they hit the home button, you'll be backgrounded uh, at that point in time. And then from backgrounded, you could go back to active, or you could be suspended, and then you could go into not running. So Xamarin notifies us of all these states in the app delegate, and you could get, uh, there's some overrides in there that you could do. So the app delegate, you, when you have a not running state, you're going to go active. The method there is the on activated. On inactive, you have on resign activation. On backgrounded, did enter background. When you're active, you will do will enter foreground and on activated again. And then on suspended, you will get will terminate. Now, will terminate may not always fire. Um, uh, that's when your application will terminate after it's been uh, suspended. So in the views, you also have some um, 